This game is rated M and is intended for mature audiences. Hey there, buddy! Ah, here we go. Yeah. I mean, pretty much all the visual novels I've played have had really good music. How wonderful would that be if that really ha was what happened? I would be able to refute Oyashiro-sama's curse. But if I denied Oyashiro-sama's curse, that would mean admitting that Rena and the rest were the perpetrators. D D D Gosh! You don't remember what had happened at the festival, you lunkhead! If I'd said that Rena and the rest weren't the perpetrators, then that would mean believing in Oyashiro-sama's curse. OR THAT SOMEONE ELSE IS RESPONSIBLE! By denying both of those, I would be admitting that I myself was losing it. The three options from which I couldn't choose became a trilemma of sorts. They mixed together and formed a whirlpool in my mind, making my head spin. I know, he's too far gone. Whatever visual novels have I played? Uh, Ace Attorney series, love that series. And then on my Twitch channel, I played Clannad and uh, three of the roots of Fruit of Grisea. Oh, and last year at Halloween, I played Doki Doki Literature Club. Another great game. Once again, I straightened myself and leaned my head back slightly to cool myself down. Calm down, KG. Accept what has actually happened as reality. Stop thinking of anything more than that. But I couldn't help but think of it. How wonderful it would be if it turned out that I was delirious and everything up until now was a figment of my imagination. I'm, I'm leaning more towards that at this point. <sighs> Well, Shirosama's curse wouldn't exist, and I would still be the bestest buddies with Rena and the rest. I would have—I would have to be crazy. That was the first time in my life I'd ever wished for such a thing. Get a psychiatric evaluation. That better be Pizza Hut. The phone rang noisily downstairs. Generally, there were no calls for me, so I never really answered the phone that much. But since my parents weren't here, I had no choice. I squirmed off my bed and went downstairs. Oh, oh sorry, I accidentally skipped that first part. Because I was scrolling down and mixing up. I intuitively had a bad feeling about this. It was because I thought she was going to ask me to go out and buy some things. So I took the initiative. The other day, we went out as a family and bought a whole case of cup noodles. I wanted to get a bunch of different kinds, actually, but they refused since the individual packs were expensive. So instead, I got a whole case of the mega-sized pork and bone and ginger-flavored ones I liked. But my parents didn't like strong flavors and didn't touch any of them, so the cupboards were still full of them. <laughs> <laughs> this was really abrupt. It's quite a distance to Tokyo from Hinamizawa. Gunning at full speed down the highway, it would take six hours. Dad has a license, but since he doesn't like the highway, they likely took the train. It would have taken longer. <laughs> Horror convenience. Oh, yes, of course. Now that you mentioned it, I did remember that they talked all the time about how his job prospects weren't looking so good. Part of my father's particular fragile artistic personality. His emotions changed as easily as the fall sky. You could also say that he couldn't take criticism. As their son, there was nothing more I could say once they started talking about work. <laughs> True. Yesterday I did bring up if I died rather abruptly, so I suppose they were a little worried. Uh, yes! Yes! <laughs> 
But really, I was more depressed by the fact that nothing would be solved by telling them. But I didn't plan on dying. At least not while I still knew nothing. I would never allow it. I not that also is not going to be reassuring, dude. The call ended like that. Sometimes my parents went off to Tokyo for business meetings. But Tokyo was far away. They normally did things by phone. The times they did go were normally planned out in advance. It never happened this suddenly. I couldn't say that those circumstances didn't feel strange, or rather, unnatural. Anyway, I only needed to recognize the reality of the situation. That tonight, I was the only one in the house. That when my parents came back from work, I'd be gone. Missing. Vanished. Looking back on the series of events the, of the previous five years involving Oyashiro-sama's curse, it wouldn't seem that strange at all. Come to think of it, it was getting pretty late. I didn't think it was good that the only light on in the whole house was from my room on the second floor. It was the same as broadcasting to the enemy that my parents were gone and that this was their chance. First I ran to the living room, flicked on the lights, and turned on the TV to a reassuring volume. Next was the study. I similarly turned on the lights and some music. With this, from the outside, it would look like my parents were here. Once again, I went for the house, checking to see if there was anything left unlocked. When I saw the veranda and the laundry still hanging out there, I went pale. That would have made it too obvious I needed to take it down! I snatched down the laundry haphazardly and erased all traces that my mother wasn't there. It should be fine now. Ah! The garage! They hadn't gone all the way to Tokyo by car, but they had gone up to the Okinawa station. Or Onikoya, or whatever it is. The garage was uh, empty, wide open, and in plain sight. This was not good. I panicked and rushed out to the back and to close the normally open garage door. It should be fine now. No, I needed to get the paper! Mom always got the paper. Since they left in the afternoon, the evening paper was still out there! My premonition was correct. I pulled out everything from the mailbox and dropped it in the entryway. With this, for sure this time it should be fine. Come to think of it, leaving the cupboard busted like that from my little freakout was kind of bad. <laughs> When your mom first started letting you stay home alone, you would do similar things for a bit. I mean, yeah. It's not a bad idea to make people think there are multi there's a lot of people there. I'll just say I tripped and fell, and that the bat I was holding smashed into it. Even so, just leaving it in the current state wasn't good. I should clean it up a little before mom gets home and scolds me. Yeah, uh, you definitely destroyed a bunch of stuff in the entryway there, bro. Good luck explaining that. I remembered that there was a broom and a dust ban in the closet. As I was going to get them, the phone rang once again. You idiot, Keiichi Maibara! Don't reveal that your parents are gone! You can follow up still. Calm down and take care of it. That wasn't a good response either. Now they might say that they'll call again, or to tell you to call her for her to call them when she comes back. The scenario I feared didn't play out, eliciting a sigh of relief. That call was fortunate in more ways than one. I'll have to deal with any telephone calls coming in for my parents tonight. Yeah, I was somehow able to deal with the phone call just now, but I couldn't continue to rely on such poor improvisation. I needed to make up a good story to explain that my parents were home but couldn't answer the phone at the moment. They were making tempura and couldn't step away right now. That wasn't good enough. They were sick and went to bed because they weren't feeling well. Was that going to be safe enough? I was thinking about it on the way back to my room when the phone rang once again. It was like they were calling because they knew I was going to lie. I didn't want to pick it up. But I knew I had to. They'd suspect my parents weren't here. I should have just taken the phone off of the hook under the pretense that I didn't realize that it was. But since the phone rang, I had to pick it up. I prepared myself and lifted up the receiver. I stopped announcing that this was the Maibara residence, as I had no reason to be kind to someone I didn't know the identity of. But unlike my uncouth voice, the person on the other side sounded goofy and lighthearted. <laughs> yeah, is Maxie there? No, <laughs> 
沖ノ宮書房の大石と申しますがお大石さんですか前原さんですかこんばんはお元気そうで何よりです Oh great! It's the guy who's gonna make us go even crazier ちょ,ちょっと待ってくださいね I grabbed the portable handset and rushed up to my room with it. It was the same no matter where I was since there was nobody else home, but I wanted to be in a spot that just felt a bit safer when speaking on the phone with Uisi san. Since then, when was that exactly? There was something about the brazen way that he talked that rubbed me the wrong way. The last time I spoke with Uisi san was two days ago. The day I stayed home from school, I met Uisi san on the way back from the hospital, and we headed into town for lunch and had a talk. Then, after that, Rena and Mion came to check on me. Whenever I spoke of Uisi san, they always knew about it. It was like that since the first time I met him. Today's phone call may well be <laughs> found out by them as well. Mosh mosh. その後、何か変わったことはありませんかとお尋ねしたんです。お返事がないんで焦りましたよ。えっと、特には。We're just gonna go. The words stopped in my throat. There was a ton of stuff that happened. All of it baffling. What should I talk about? I didn't understand any of it, but I should try asking. If I didn't ask now, I may never have another chance. This night when my parents weren't home. I had no guarantees I would make it through the night safely after all. So, Oishi-san, I think I'm going to be in the middle of the night. Really? Is there a possibility? I'm going to be in the middle of the night. I'm going to be in the middle of the night. I'm going to be in the middle of the night. I hope Oishi's going to be like, dude, you're paranoid, go see a doctor. Those two? Rena and Mion. And that's where I'm going. おいしさんと一緒に昼飯を食ったことを正されました。それで、お見舞いってことでおはぎを置いていったんですが、その中に針が入ってたんです。偶然飲み込まずに済みましたが、これってやっぱり脅迫でしょうか。その針は、えっと
実は今朝。The fan was definitely aiming for me. I could say that without question due to the circumstances at the time. その車のナンバープレートは見ましたかこちらでも探してみます。Damn! At the time, I just flipped out yelling at him, but I didn't look at the plate. With failures on my part with the needle and the plate number. I was so focused on just protecting myself that I had let some of the most important details slip out of my grasp. I punched my pillow, annoyed at how worthless I was. Uzi <laughs> san started to hem and haw on the other end. I could imagine him folding his arms. What Rena said on the way home today, asking why I was so much like Satoshi kun. Now I could say it with confidence that Rena knew what happened to Satoshi. She knew that there was more to it than just him simply disappearing. Rena was in the past. She knew that there was more to it than just him simply disappearing. Rena was in the past. レナが言うには、俺はサトシとそっくりらしいんです。このまま行くと、俺もサトシと同じ運命をたどると、そんな感じのことを言うんです。運命ですか具体的にどんな運命をたどるか言及しましたかえっと、天候と。天候レナは、サトシは、転校したって言ってるんですで、俺もこのままだと転校しちゃうぞってウイシさん let out a stern sigh and then grumbled loudly 前原さんそれはおそらく何かの脅迫もしくは警告ですね俺もそう思ってます At that point, I started to think, would it be prudent to sum up everything that had happened up until now with the machinations of some human perpetrators? Other than the theory that it was Rena and the others, I was left with Oyashiro sama's curse actually existing as the only explanation or conspiracy. Of course, I couldn't tell that to Uisi san. Except, Rena's strange behavior could be proof in of other scenarios. Whether it was Oyashiro sama's curse being real or everything being part of a conspiracy committed by all the villagers, Rena was involved. Rena had to know something. Rena was suspicious. What exactly was Rena? I couldn't help but think that she was somehow involved with the prior strain of the mysterious deaths. I seem to recall that Oisi san had admitted that he had dug into Rena's past a little. Are you forgetting? That Rena had that hushed conversation with Mion and that she was genuinely worried that she was going to disappear. He was probably just downplaying it when he said a little. Meaning he had actually dug pretty deep, most likely. I wanted to hear about Rena. I wanted to know what happened at her previous school, among other things that were still unknown to me. If Rena was somebody I should suspect, no, not that. I wanted to know the truth. Tonight, I was alone in this huge house. Even though I said I couldn't count on them, I had lost the security I'd felt I had just by my parents being around. It wasn't like this house was some sort of fortress or castle. If a malicious person decided to use brute force, they'd easily gain entry. There was no other residence as close to the Maibara residence. No one would be able to hear anything, no matter how loud it was. I had never felt as much resentment towards my father's artistic temperament and the fact that he had this house built in such a remote location as I did right now. I wondered if I would still be here by tomorrow morning. So I had to ask right now. Because I had no idea what the next chance might come. Ano, Oi san, I want to talk about something. Don't forget to leave. Hey, what do you want to say? Is that the doorbell ringing? Even though he was so far away on the other end of the line, this was the most reliable he had ever felt. I wanted to ask about Rena. About what happened to her at the previous school. I noticed the sound that had been going on for a while now. Since I was so focused on the call, I hadn't paid attention to it at first, but I suddenly realized it was the doorbell. 
The time was 7 o'clock. It was past the time the postman would be making a delivery and past any sensible time for a neighbor to be visiting. Yeah, who, who goes anywhere after 7? I considered just acting like nobody was home, but that wouldn't be good. That would ruin all of the work I put into making it look like my parents were home. I need to answer the door. Uh, next Saturday's stream will most likely be a new stream series, yes. I already, I already know what the next stream series will be. That would be a problem. I dropped the handset on my bed and dashed down to the door. I needed to make up a good excuse to get them to leave. I had a hunch that it was the lady who called the night before Uisi-san did. In which case, it would be one of the neighbors who's friends with my mom. I'll just say mom isn't feeling well and went to bed early. That would be the easiest option. It'd be hard for her to ask me to wake my mom up if she's not feeling well. The bell continued to ring at regular intervals. If someone didn't answer after you rang the bell so much, you'd normally give up and go home, wouldn't you? Without removing the chain, I opened the door slightly and peered out at the visitor. A chill ran down my spine. I knew it. Somewhere deep inside, I had prepared for this moment. I had tried to escape by imagining it was the easiest person to deal with, one of my mom's friends. Hi, Rena. L Lena. There shouldn't be any reason for Rena to come over at this hour. The timing also made me feel uneasy, because it was just as I was about to ask Uisi-san about Rena. I wish I could have chalked this up to mere coincidence, but those unsettling words from Mion several days ago echoed back to me. Hi, Rana. It seems that Mion wasn't with her. But that didn't change the situation at all. Uh-oh. Should we let her in, folks? <laughs> oh, bleep. It was true that speaking through a chain door wasn't the right way to talk to a classmate, but... That's not true! She went to visit at the festival! Rena looked at the ground sadly, but she kept smiling at least, and her effort to keep that smile up was quite pitiful. Even though she was tugging at my heartstrings, I didn't lower my guard. As long as I stayed like this, even if my it made my heart ache, my life wasn't in danger. What I really feared, more than the possibility that hoodlums would assault me if I removed the chain, was trusting Rena enough to remove the chain, and having my friendship betrayed. As long as the chain wasn't unlatched, even if it made my heart ache, I wouldn't have to deal with being betrayed by Rena. Since it didn't seem like I'd remove the chain from her silent urging, she appeared to give up trying to get me into the entranceway. Uh, well, yes, but actually, no. No, I haven't eaten. Since my mom wasn't here, dinner wouldn't be ready no matter how long I waited. I laid down when I got home, was woken up by the phone, and didn't have a chance to eat since I used up all that time talking. I was going to have cup noodles in my any case. I could just eat one whenever I wanted to. Yeah, <laughs> She's a duple ghost. Run. Run ahead. I held out a box. A box of stacks. A stack of boxes wrapped in cloth. It's one of two possibilities, folks. Rena is either extremely sweet and trying to do something nice for us, or she's trying to kill us. It's one or the other. There's no in-between. <laughs> Place your bets right now if she's actually very nice or if she's trying to kill us. 
Although I think most people in Twitch chat right now already know what the, how the story goes and probably know the answer regardless. So <laughs> I think right now she's trying to do something nice. Uh, Rena, I hate to break this to you, but tofu is disgusting. <laughs> Do you have anything with steak in it? Or chicken? Or pork? All that's good. And also depends on what kind of vegetables. After what went down earlier, you'd be too scared to give Keiichi any. <laughs> Wait, hang on. Are you saying we shouldn't open the door because we don't want Keiichi hurting her? <laughs> or we don't want her hurting Keiichi? <laughs> Either way, it could go. It could go either way. There's no re way. There's no way I wouldn't like that. I love miso soup with lots of ingredients: white radish, carrots, burdock root, and potatoes. Dense and fibrous root vegetables. Yeah, that miso soup looks incredible. Doggone it! Rena knows how to make me open the door. <laughs> she cooks good food. No. I shouldn't. Without a doubt, rice needs miso soup. Stuffing rice down your gullet, sipping miso soup in between ravenous bites. Oh, yes, how wonderful it is to be born Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> well, they make it sound better than it actually is. Yeah, potatoes are the top tier vegetable. Like, no question. I'm not a fan of miso soup. You guys ever read the uh, picture book Owl at Home? It's like a set of really short stories about an owl living in his house. One of the stories, he's like making tea by just crying into the teapot and then boiling the, his tears and drinking it. It's called tear water tea. That's what I imagine miso soup tastes like. I've had miso soup. It's just like salt. It tastes like I'm drinking that owl's boiled tears. <laughs> so. This has been Artie's hot tip of the day. <laughs> Uh, can I just have the cucumbers instead? Before I had moved here to Hinamizawa, I scoffed at the mountain vegetables called sansai. But I was captivated by their charm the first time I tried them. Such a deep, yet light flavor. Those so-called supermarket vegetables taste rough and overpowering in comparison. If you had to describe them, then they were the vegetables for the uninitiated. To become an expert such as myself, you first had to partake of sansai. It was common knowledge around here that the Ryugu family's traditional pickles were wonderfully delicious. Ah, uh, no matter what kind of pickles they were, they'd go so well with that fluffy white rice! But wait, there's more! So delicious. It just seems so delicious! Farewell to my unhealthy self who said he'd make do with cup noodles! Rena appeared to be in good spirits when she was offering such a delicious-sounding dinner. Oh, come on, you gotta let her in now. The stress evaporated from my gut and hunger, a pale haste its voracious head. At the same time, my wariness of Rena suddenly dwindled. Facts! Facts, yes. Men like girls who can cook. Men like food. Rena did say she was alone. It shouldn't be a problem letting her inside. Though the possibility that it was laced with poison still hadn't been ruled out. At that moment, a cold chill ran down my spine once again. I couldn't understand why such a sensation had occurred just then. But the voice inside me was sounding the alarm. His happy Rena speaking of this charming dinner was dependent on one premise. And that premise was that tonight, dinner hadn't been made at my house. Meaning it was under the assumption that my mom, who should be making it, wasn't here. At any normal household, 7 o'clock would be around the middle of dinner time. If my mom were here, we'd be eating dinner around this time as well. The fact that she brought over all the makings of a meal at this time was inherently strange. Unless she knew. Rena, did she... did she know that my parents weren't home? But there were also the chance that this was a I had turned on the lights and a bunch of other stuff to make it seem like my parents were here. There was the chance that Rena was unsure if my parents were home. But I had to wonder. The laundry, the garage, the evening paper. There were plenty of signs of them being hastily tidied up. <laughs> Emergency meeting. Burn! Rena sus. 
It was hard to say that Rena didn't have a chance to determine if my parents were here or not. But there was no reason for me to confess that right now. I should try holding on to that fact as long as I could. First of all, the chain was still latched. As long as I didn't take it off, Rena wouldn't be able to do anything to me. Uh, uh, Oh, she looked disappointed. I don't know. When she says, is that so, that's her verbal tick of, like, I know you're lying, basically. Unable to think of a good way to refuse, my words trailed off weakly. Meanwhile, uh, Uisi is on the other phone, like, man, he's shaking forever at that person. This poor girl probably made put a lot of work into making all this, and then we're just like, uh, leave. With a smile that bordered on a cringe, I dodged her and the questions apologetically. But the feeling I tried to ignore began creeping up on my back again. I just want to point out, okay, what if... What if Rena is actually completely normal? And it's just us that's weird. Can you imagine how tough it would be being Rena in this situation? Just like, your friend's going crazy. You're like, I gotta reach out to him and try to bring him back. And he's just like, ah! Dad, she is in my pants! They won't go away! You're trying to kill me! <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, no one comment on that. <laughs> I spoke as if my mom was setting down dinner right now, but it didn't mesh well with what Rena was saying. Rena was talking as if she was aware of some obvious fact. And that, I was aware of it as well. Alright, have a good night, Arus. Thanks for joining in. Rena had assumed out of nowhere that I had made the dishes. No. Not so much that I'd made them, but rather that my mom hadn't. Yeah, well, I mean, here... Presumably she's got some... There was something in her past that made her snap. She might be on medication for it now, but at, at the very least, there are times where it seems like she's going crazy with those lizard eyes, but I don't know if that's actually her being crazy or if we're just, like, thinking she's going crazy. I don't really know. Oh, is, is she going to accuse us of being a liar again? Oh. Rena fell silent at that moment. At that moment, I felt that the light had suddenly disappeared from her eyes. Uh, also, I, I am on the phone with someone. I gotta go. <laughs> You're going to eat pizza again. <laughs> I feel called out, Rena. The conversation might appear natural at first glance, but Rena was firmly in control. It felt like I was being interrogated. I tried my best to put on a strong front, but I couldn't grip my teeth quite right. So instead, I looked like somebody who was borderline hysterical. But Rana showed no reaction whatsoever, even to that silliness. She knows! I told you, she knows! <laughs> you know, microwave dinners do have a place, but I do, I do encourage everybody to learn to cook at least a couple things. Even simple things! The, the ultimate, if you can find, like, home-cooked meals that are cheap, simple, easy... <laughs> 
cook quickly and taste good? Like, oh man, that's the best. It's rare, but you can do it. My personal favorite recipe, you just take chicken, salsa, taco seasoning, slow cook it for several hours, and then you can shred it and put it on like anything. It's amazing. It's so easy. <laughs> fair, fair enough. <laughs> that's that's the thing. I love dinners that I can make, and it's just like, oh, you've got, po I've got enough, I've got enough for like a full week. <laughs> Rena had taken that assertion of mine that my mother was home and making dinner right now, and was completely ignoring it. Ugh, facts. Washing the dishes is definitely annoying. <laughs> I could tell that I, the more I panicked, the colder Rena became. <laughs> At that moment, an uncomfortable chill crept in from the gap in the doorway. <laughs> she knows. I couldn't keep up this charade anymore. Rena. She knew full well that my parents weren't home. But I'd come too far to admit that now. Anyway, my parents were here, and we'd be having dinner soon. That was the situation I had concocted. So I answered. I told her that she was here. I could feel the humidity drying out from the surrounding air. Rena's eyes were becoming even more frigid, piercing me with their gelid glare. What? <laughs> I tried acting casual, but that facade was torn off me the instant I looked into Rena's eyes. That look, it informed me of Rena's response faster than she could open her mouth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, jeez, I wasn't ready for that. Oh, I forgot, yes, yeah, she is behind that chain door. Jeez, Rena. Calm down, girl. <laughs> She knows. Oh, yeah. Rena's outburst just sent a jolt surging through my body. Rena and I were still separated by a, what, a few inches of that slightly ajar, but still chain door could afford. But despite that, I was still being cornered. My house, which I'd considered a safe haven until now, had become more like a dark alleyway where no one could save me. Yeah, it's the eyes. The eyes are the creepiest part. I knew right now that Rena had already known that my parents would not be here tonight, but it was still so strange that it had come to this. Even if she somehow knew my parents weren't home, there was no way she'd be able to guess what I'd be eating tonight. But Rena said she'd guess. How could she guess it? How could she know what it was instead? That I was going to eat? Wait. The cooking repertoire of a man who can't do housework is probably nothing but cup noodles, after all. Looking at this statistically, it was the most probable answer. That didn't mean she was guessing. You're right, but I don't want to let you in now! <laughs> no way! Gosh! Imag imagine you hear a knock at your door. You, you look at the eye hole, and you just see Rena staring at you. Oof. Calm down, Keiji Maibara. This will, this is just coincidence. Rena was just reading certain tells of mine. So the fact that she was inferring what I was thinking alarmed me. But it wasn't as if she was actually reading my mind. If I was being read, then she was a demon. No, not a demon. Things like that. They couldn't possibly exist. Ramengo. <laughs> What? Rena indicated that the point my answer was addressing was wrong. Her rebuttal was so short that I momentarily didn't understand the words Rena had spoken. Oh! I can't... He can't hear what she said. It's not... It's not that she said a very rude word. What? <laughs> It wasn't long before I regretted how carelessly I had pushed forward with that question. It was such a simple answer. That was why I wasn't able to comprehend it.
She knows what flavor of cup noodle ramen we're using. Oh, no! She's creepy! She's stalking us! I wondered how I appeared in the moments when my mind went completely blank until the moment I was able to recover. As my field of vision began to distort, slowly swirling in a counterclockwise direction, I lost all sense of balance. That's... that's very creepy that she knows the exact flavor. I didn't even deny it. That was the type of frenzied state I was in. How could Rena know even this? Not even caring as I mashed my head against the door, I fixated my gaze on Rena. But she didn't even flinch when she saw me do that. How could you dodge the question at a time like this? The chain and the door were suddenly were no longer protecting me. A shiver ran up my spine. I tried covering it up with an angry facade. What? Oh, that's really disturbing. Oh, that's really disturbing. Holy crap! She's a psycho! Maybe Keiichi is, uh... Maybe he's not as crazy as I thought. She literally just admitted to stalking us. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, this is getting really disturbing. I couldn't understand why she was saying she'd been following me all this time. Okay. Rena, on a scale of like 1 to 10 creepiness factor, Rena was at like a 5 or a 6. She just skyrocketed to like a 9. Wow. <laughs> like that night? That night I was absorbed in my phone conversation with Uisi san. I didn't even sense her being there, standing behind the door, behind me, standing there, just like that? <laughs> Unless it was a case of like she was just with us and we invited her and we knew and we just forgot she was there. <laughs> In which case she's not an eye, but uh well. She's so creepy. それで圭一君大好きな大きいカップの豚骨生姜醤を選んだんだよね。レナも好きだよ。豚骨ラーメン。でも大きいカップは全部食べきれないけどね。My brain was paralyzed, dulling my senses. It might have been a defense mechanism to diminish the fear I was feeling to non-traumatizing levels. With the fear being diminished, the fog enveloping my mind was cleared away. Then, I could understand what Rena was saying and started to put meaning behind her words. Even so, my fear hadn't subsided completely. It was like I was standing at the edge of a cliff, eyes closed so I didn't have to look down. It didn't actually solve any of the basic problems. I slowly took a step backwards, and as I withdrew, Rena advanced. <laughs> I'm not letting you in. I am not letting you in my house. Oh, freak, this is creepy. Oh, jeez. No, okay. Oh, jeez. Oh, no. She's trying to, she's going to try to force her way in. Oh, no. Rena's pale, slender fingers squirmed through the crack of the door one at a time, as if they had a mind of their own rattling the chain. If she had unlatched the chain from the door, a feeling of terror would have just exploded within me. But Rena didn't do that. She was simply imploring me to remove the chain. I tried my hardest to light the fuse to the powder keg in my heart. 
Trying again and again. Clatter, clatter. But it doesn't light. It doesn't light! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh jeez! Oh, she looks like a demon in this one. <laughs> get out! Oh, get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! Get out! <laughs> the powder keg inside me finally went off. No smoldering. It just exploded. I tackled the door. The force through the door had knocked Rena momentarily off balance. I couldn't hesitate here. I grabbed onto the doorknob with both hands, planted my feet firmly, and pulled it with all my might. But that slamming sound I so desired didn't happen. I could feel a tiny, disturbing bit of resistance keeping the door from closing. And the source of that was... Rena's fingers. Each of those fingers wriggling, squirming around like the tendrils of a carnivorous plant through the crack of the doorway. <laughs> Get your fingers out of the door! Now! <laughs> it wasn't a harsh shriek, but more of a yelp she was trying to keep back. I kept on pulling at the door of all my might. I didn't even realize that if I didn't loosen my pull on the door, or at least momentarily, Rena wouldn't be able to pull her fingers out, and that was why the door wasn't closing. I didn't care one bit for her apology. No matter how much she apologized, it didn't change any of what she had just done up till now. It didn't change anything! <laughs> Rena couldn't even leave if she wanted to because I trapped her fingers. Rena's white fingers had become deep red and they were no longer even squirming. <laughs> we better not be allowed to cut off her fingers here. <laughs> This is intense! Rena's apologies were occasionally twisted with pain, but like a broken record, she was intent on repeating it over and over again. Go away, go away, go away! Stop it, 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 stop it! I pulled on the door even harder. Finally, Rena's fingers were somehow able to slip out from their imprisonment in the doorway. The moment that happened, the door closed soundly, and I could hear the thud of Rena falling on her butt on the other side. I locked the door immediately. I made a loud clunk, voicing my rejection to Rena. No, oh, this door stays shut! Rena leaned against the door, apologizing profusely and nothing else. After confirming that I was sufficiently sealed off from her, I trudged away from the entryway. On the other side, I could still hear Rena echoing her apology. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Those pitiful words, they would be forever seeking my forgiveness. I didn't feel bad about this at all. But that wasn't out of any sort of malice. I just... I just... I felt a sort of hazy sense of relief that I was able to escape from Rena. Before, Mion had threatened me at the doorway, saying that there was nothing she didn't know. And just now, at the same place, Rena told me the same thing. My feeble attempts to disguise the fact that my parents weren't home had served no purpose from the start. I should have just pretended to be out and not even opened the door! My meager plans hadn't helped at all. In Hinomizawa, it was impossible to outwit them. Even though I was on the other side of the door, I wanted to get as far away from Rena as possible. One step, two steps. With each step, her sniveling apologies became more distant. I sprinted up the stairs and dove back into my room. As you would expect, I was finally no longer able to hear Rena repeating her endless apology. Diving into my bed, I was startled by the hard lump I felt. There was something in my bed?! Did you forget you were on the phone? It was the receiver. I finally remembered. I was in the middle of a call with Oisi-san. Looking at the clock, apparently not much time had passed since I went downstairs. Could it be that my clock had run out of batteries? I had talked with Rena for so long. How did almost no time pass? But the hand on the clock was ticking forward one second every second as usual. As I put the still warm receiver to my ear, time, which felt frozen, began moving once again. That definitely felt like a long scene to me. It became apparent that the amount of time that had passed between myself and Uisi-san was different. Over the phone, I could hear an energetic voice from a sports program or something. It 
drove home just how far away Uishi san really was. There's a weird way of putting it. I wasn't confident that I could coherently explain the situation to Uishi san. But I didn't need to right now. Right now, I needed to know about Rena. That's right. I was planning to ask Uishi san more about Rena, but Rena's little visit had interrupted the conversation. What was true and what was false, I couldn't tell. The only thing I knew was the single grim reality that Rena was suspicious. I might be able to figure something out if I asked Uishi san about her. Up until now, I had regretted it whenever I forced myself to ask about things that I was better off not knowing. But, looking at it that way, you could say I hit rock bottom. There was no possible way I could feel any more regret than I did right now. No. Rather, I wanted to know if there was anything beyond this that I would regret more. Forget about tomorrow. It wasn't out of the realm of possibility for something to happen tonight. I wanted to know everything I could. I was absolutely not going to die like this. Not without knowing anything. I definitely won't. I understood that Oishi-san was talking in circles. A bit meant I dug so deep it'd be hard to discuss it with you since you're her friend. I spoke as calmly as possible to Oishi-san, who was continuing to avoid the issue. And then I said it. She has a lizard eyes. The manner in which Yuisi san spoke became very firm. Do you have some sort of proof? That was him talking as a detective. I could tell even over the phone how disappointed Yuisi san was. Pulling on the fishing line when he felt only a bite, only to reel in the bait. Disappointed, but ready to cast the line once more. That's how it seemed. What I meant was, you can't come and save me without proof. I stuck that barb in there. As uishi san loved roundabout ways of saying things, he understood me just fine. Okay, I believe you. That was not the least bit reassuring. Uisi san was just using me to continue this investigation. I was just going to get killed, and my corpse would be an important piece of evidence. That was all I was to him. Uisi san went silent on the other end of the line. That may have been too blunt, but I didn't care. All I needed was to relay to Uisi san was that I was currently in a very dangerous position. レナのことサトシは転校しました多分俺もそれほど遠くない将来レナの言う転校をするでしょうですが大石さんには俺の死体を見つけることもできないでしょうね現に佐藤氏の死体だってまだ見つけられてないま、前原さんどうか落ち着
個人として行ったということですかご理解いただけて助かります話のほとんどは電話あもしくは会って聞かせてもらったものばかりですですから裏が取れていません鵜呑みにしないでほしいということなんですよご理解いただけますね全部聞いた話だけなんですかええー、申し訳ないです個人調査ですのでねうん、あれ以前レナのカルテを見たって言いませんでしたか確かにそう聞きましたよそんなことも言いましたかね<笑>気のせいということにしてください I didn't care about Uisi-san having certain obligations and responsibilities I also didn't care if there was no proof Even if they were just rumors, there's no smoke without fire after all. Uisi san finally opened those tight lips of his. It seemed that Rena lived in Hinamizawa a long time ago. She'd moved to Ibraki、uh, Prefecture just before starting elementary school. Then, following that, right after transferring, the unfortunate incident with the breaking of the school windows happened. Then Rena confided to the doctor. It was Oyashiro sama. This was everything I knew. I didn't need to ask. It was the incident right before she transferred back to Hinamizawa. Rena が起こした事件とその後の医者での告白ですね If you want to sleep, DX, please go to sleep. That should take priority over this. You can always look at the Twitch、uh, export next day, and I will be uploading all of this to YouTube. So, if, if you need to sleep, please, please sleep. Please sleep. Thank you. And thank you for joining in. The incident runner was responsible for you. Hi, yeah. Oi, so, uh, so, no, you're s t i l l so. レナたちを疑っているんですねええ疑っていますやはりレナたちが犯人ああいえ疑うとはそういう意味ではないんですウィシーさんは the type of person to say things of confidence but these particular words were less than reassuring じゃあ何を疑ってるんですかおやしろ様ですよえおやしろ様のたたりって本当にあるのかな,なんてさ<笑><笑>ウィシさん、laugh was quite dry。certainly not the kind that would make you want to join in。ウィシさん、resume the conversation。about the dubious circumstances behind Satoshi's disappearance。the course of events lay a l leading him to delve into Rena's past。Just then, there was thunder in the distance, and a heavy rain started pouring down. It came without warning, a downpour fiercely beating in the ground. I had left the window in my room op open a crack to let the heat out. The violent wind danced into my room, making the curtains flap wildly. I got up while still on the phone and grasped the window. 学校側も被害者も告発していないので、正式には事件ではないのです。でですね、この辺りがどうも関係者皆さん、口が重いんですよ。被害者の一人は、片身に後遺症を残すぐらい殴られているのにもかかわらずです。学校側か、もしくは表沙汰になるのを望まない何者かが、いろいろ根回しをしたのかもしれませんねまたカウンセリングを担当した神経科医も職業倫理に厳格な方でもしもし前原さん聞こえてます There was the figure of a person standing by the light near the mailbox the whole time Even in this torrential rain they didn't have an umbrella They were unquestionably drenched from head to toe. 
In the shower, which would more resemble the waterfall, droplets of water drip down their hair. <laughs> How did I know it was going to be her? Oh, she looks really sad, though. Actually, she looks really sad here. Uh, oh, shoot, you're right. It's very small because of the perspective, but yep, her fingers are indeed bloody. Aww. <sighs> okay, I... Part of me feels bad that she's so sad about this. But at the other, on the other hand, she was actually stalking us. And that's not okay. Like, this is, this, this hits particularly hard for me personally, because I have actually had somebody stalk me in real life, and it was horrible. So I have very little sympathy for this, but at the same time, she does look sad there. In one hand was the stack of boxes wrapped in cloth. Her eyes focused on my room focused on me as I was about to close the window. Her mouth was methodically repeating a chewing motion. It was as if she had something hard to chew in her mouth with her cheeks puffing out. What could she be eating over there? How could it be that at this time I was more enthralled by Rena instead of the shocking developments being brought to light by Uisi-san? If it hadn't started raining, I wouldn't have gone to the window. Then I wouldn't have noticed Rena, nor would I have noticed that... Rena's mouth was moving in the same pattern. She wasn't eating something, she was repeating something. What was it? Was she repeating... to me? What was she saying? And why was I, right up against the window, fixated on her? Even in this torrential downpour, Rena was still apologizing. Sad, but you don't get to stalk people. The other self inside me drew the curtain hastily with my right hand, blocking my view of the outside. But even doing that, Rena's relentless apologies still reached my ears. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. If I forgive you for this, will you forgive me for that? Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. Please stop. I'm sorry. 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 Damn it! Why should I have to forgive her? God wants me to forgive them? I'm the one who wants to be forgiven. What part of me can't you forgive? I won't be killed! If you won't forgive me, then I won't forgive you either. I won't forgive. I won't forgive. 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 He's lost the plot! What is that, like, the fifth time now that he's lost the plot? By the way, we are playing Higarashi when they cry.